The vast majority of Apple devices come with biometric security built right in, which means they use Touch ID or Face ID, that's fingerprint or facial identification, to unlock the device. Now, this same functionality is available to us in our apps too, which means we can unlock sensitive data only when authenticated by a secure user. Now, this is another Objective-C API, but honestly, it's only a little bit unpleasant to use in SwiftUI, at least compared to some of the other horrors we've seen elsewhere. But before we write any code, we've got to go ahead and add a new project option, just like we did when we were working with the user's photo library, um, because for reasons known only to Apple, we want to use Touch ID. We explain why we want to use it in our code, but Face ID is done with a project option. And so we've got to add that before we do anything else here. And so go ahead and select your current target. Then uh, that's the one here, bucket list targets. Uh, choose the info tab and then right click on an existing key here already. Uh, I'll choose one here, for example. Then choose add row. Now we want to add into here under the privacy options. We want face ID usage description. So add that in now. Again, touch ID is done in code. It's only face ID has this uh, option right here. And then we'll add a, a reason for this saying we need to unlock your data. Now as a reminder, uh, Apple will take care of showing a permission prompt to the user and responding to it and handling that appropriately. We're explaining why to the user. It'll be shown below the main text in the permission prompt. Anyway, with that done, we can go out to, to uh, our content view, then add an import for Apple's local authentication framework, which is what handles all the biometric authentication we care about. And with that, we're now in a good place to try and write our biometric code. Now, I mentioned earlier, this is only a little bit unpleasant, and here's where the uh, unpleasantness comes in. Swift developers, you know, we use the error protocol for handling errors. We can make our own enum, can compare, uh, conform it to a quite a error and then make cases for different kind of errors to handle. Um, Objective-C had a special class for errors called NS error. And uh, we've got to use that here. In particular, we've got to pass that object, our error, into our function call to work with biometrics. And if an error happens, it'll be sent back to us with a value inside, with the error data inside. And uh, this is done in a really curious way. Rather than returning a new value, it's actually modified in place. So we pass it in, it's modified in place, and if we get it back again with that same data changed, we can uh, go ahead and read into it. Um, this was, believe it or not, the standard in Objective-C, but it's quite alien in Swift. And so when we use it, we've got to pass in the error using ampersand pass it in, let it be modified internally, and I'll check it later on. Anyway, you'll see in code in a second. We're gonna write down here an authenticate method that isolates all the biometric functionality in a single place, which requires uh, four steps. First, we're gonna make an instance of LA context, the LA meaning local authentication. And that lets us query the user's biometric status. Status: Are they on a device supports biometrics? Um, are they opted into it already? but also perform the check itself. You know, ask them to use Face ID now, for example. Um, we'll then ask it specifically, can I perform biometric authentication? Uh, and this matters because things like uh, the iPod Touch does not have Touch ID. It's not possible to use that. And so you've got to be really, really careful around this charging ahead, always check whether the current device does actually support it or not. Um, if it is possible, then we'll go ahead and, uh, and request authentication passing in a closure to run when it completes. That's when it succeeds or fails down to us. And when they have been authenticated or not, our completion closure is called. And then we can go ahead and be told, yes, it worked or no, it didn't work. And then if not, what the error was and handle it appropriately. So let's do this now. Funk, authenticate. Like I said, the first thing we do is make a context to handle all authentication. So we'll say, let context is an LA context. Second, remember that weird way of handling errors. We've got to make an empty error now 
pass it on into the function. And if it comes back non-empty, it means it was changed somehow. We've got an error, handle it. So we'll say our error is an NS error optional. Could be an error, might not be an error, could be nil. Next up, we're gonna check, is biometric authentication currently possible? So we'll say, if our context can evaluate the policy of device owner authentication with biometrics. So touch ID or face ID. Can we do that? And if that fails with an error, something went wrong, put it into ampersand error. So this is a Boolean, it'll return true or false, but we're gonna have the any errors in here for us to check if we want to. If you wanna handle it so far or log it somewhere or whatever you wanna do, you'll get it inside that thing. But you also get a Boolean. If it can do it, then this code here will be run. So that's where we are right now. So if we're here, it means we're good. We can use biometrics. We'll say our reason is we need to unlock your data. As a reminder, uh, this string here is used with touch ID. The other one in our project options is used with face ID for, again, just reasons from Apple. Who knows? Anyway, that's our reason. We can now tell the context, please evaluate the policy. Again, it is device owner authentication with biometrics using the reason, our reason. So say when they ask why you want face ID or touch ID in this case, sorry, say we unlock your data. And we'll get back from this, our completion closure. It is finished, what do you want to do? And it takes two parameters, success and authentication error. So did it work or not? And then if it didn't work, what was the actual error? So in here, We've checked, yes, we can do this, and we have now done it. If success is true, it means we authenticated successfully. Else, there was a problem. They hit cancel, they couldn't identify, they had a face mask on, or who knows what. And then the other option is, of course, down here, this else block means there was no biometrics. So they're on a device with no touch or face ID, or they haven't enrolled in it. Either one works. Now this method by itself will not do anything because it's not connected to SwiftUI at all. To fix that, we're gonna add some state in here that we'll use to adjust when authentication worked. And we'll also then call authenticate on a peer of our view. So first we'll add some state up here, at state private var is unlocked is false. The app is currently not unlocked. And that's gonna store, simple Boolean, am I showing my sensitive protected state or not? Obviously no by default. But we'll flip that when our authentication succeeds. So down here with our comment, we'll say is unlocked equals true. Oops, like, like that, it, it has worked, we're good to go. And now we can use that inside our SwiftUI view to show different kinds of data based on whether we are unlocked or locked. So we'll say, there is a V stack here. And if we are uh, unlocked, unlocked even, if is unlocked, there we go, then do a text of, text capital T, of unlocked. Else, text locked. And because we've got a V stack here, we can attach an on appear to the whole view. We'll do on appear perform authenticate like that. And now let's press Command R to build and run our code. See how it goes. That utterly failed. Oh, it's completely failing. Cool. I'll just restart Xcode. Okay, so Xcode's now restarted, and hooray, it works again. Lucky me. It's always when I hit record, it decides to play up. Oh well. Hopefully now we should see locked, and nothing else. Like we're not seeing face ID. Touch ID, anything really. Now, it's obviously an iPhone 13 Pro, there's no Touch ID here, it's all Face ID, but it isn't doing anything. And that happens because, um, by default, iPhone simulators don't belong to Face ID, they just don't work with it. And so to fix this, you've got to go to this Features menu and choose Face ID, 
and then check this box enrolled. This person has enrolled their face in Face ID. They've signed up to biometric authentication. And now if we relaunch the app, hopefully now we should see the, there we go, boom, uh, the alert. Do you want to allow Bucket Loose to use your uh, Face ID? That string here as Face ID, that comes from our project options we added earlier. I'll press OK. That's the little prompt where it's asking to scan my face. I then go out to features and choose face ID and then matching face. And now you can see unlocked appears straight away. So it's working really, really nicely. But remember to make sure you unroll your simulator in there. If you're obviously using a real device, you want that problem, but uh, it does matter here. Um, there's an important note I want to add to the end of this, which is that for you know serious shipping apps, when you have biometric authentication like this, you always want to have a backup plan for uh, authenticating without biometrics. You know, think about folks who are wearing a face mask right now or wearing gloves and don't want to use touch ID or whatever. Um, if you force them to use biometrics, you're just going to have unhappy users. And so give uh, an initial screen before you even go near any of the biometrics saying, set an app passcode, something like that, which you stash away and then use later on if they choose to uh, not have biometrics. So just do it. It's a great feature to have. Do it with great security, but always remember to have a nice backup plan as well.